Hey everybody, Plushie here, and I apologize for the voice, I've been sick for the past week, um, but I still want to push out some videos, so this sort of comes out not too outdated, and today I want to talk a little bit about the brand new SSR writer, Takeda Shingen. I don't have that much interesting things to say about this character, however, that does not mean I think this character is mid or bad, because that seems to be the general consensus held toward the servant, uh, but I do think there are a lot of things that make him pretty sort of deceptively impressive. Uh, so to say uh, but yeah without further ado let's get into today's hot take video of Takeda Shingen before we even get into his skills I want to take a look at his deck and card data so he actually has a triple buster deck which I very much uh, enjoy um, there hasn't been an AOE SSR writer that had this kind of deck and buster decks in general just has better damage potential because of the amount of buster cards and the potential of doing a buster brave chain without having to use your MP um, and of course with buster decks they usually balance it out by giving the servant very good quick or arts cards and as you can see here that remains the case for Takeda Shingen his arts card is a 0.57% per hit gain on a four hit arts card which is really good it's a 2.28 base gain arts uh, on a writer which means that most of the times you will be fighting casters um, then this means that he gets a lot of MP back from doing MPQ a mighty chain and that is pretty important because his MP has a pretty sweet effect that we will get into in a bit. Takeda Shingen's first skill is an AoE 20% attack up for 3 turns as well as a targetable 1 turn cooldown reduction. Now this is a pretty standard skill, uh, it's a sort of base effect like a charisma A with the uh, team wide attack up tagged on to a cooldown reduction by 1. We see something similar to this like on Summary Buki who has a uh, buster and arts double type buff by 30% tacked onto a targetable cooldown reduction by one. So this is sort of like the baseline power level for these targetable cooldown reduction skills on most servants. So it is serviceable, obviously this uh, being a team wide effect makes this skill not as good at buffing himself, um, but still 20% attack up is kind of okay. It's nothing amazing. Um, but do note that once again, just like Okuni we've mentioned a little bit before, this means that potentially all of his skills are one cooldown shorter than they actually are, which is quite important in my opinion. Takeda Shingen's second skill is a 3 turn 30% buster up, a 50 MP battery, a 20 star bomb, all on a 6 turn cooldown. So this is also once again a generically good skill. 50 MP battery allows him to loop pretty easily, 30% uh, buster up is a decently sized steroid, and 20 stars is a lot of stars, especially for a rider servant. This basically means that he will be getting most of these stars and six turn cooldown is serviceable but do remember that when you combine this with his first skill you use it on himself um, this becomes a five turn cooldown skill and suddenly it seems really solid um, this also means that he is one of those uh, 50 MP chargers that has a five turn cooldown so for buster looping you can use a starting charge K scope double Koi and light uh, and no plug suit and no atlas uh, most characters with a six turn cooldown 50 battery would need atlas for uh, this kind of composition but for takeda you don't have to do that um, and you can instead use a damage boosting mystic code for example something like arctic now how relevant this is i don't know i don't really think it's that relevant for higher end farming nodes because you're not using plug suit and forcing yourself to use a k-scope on a buster looper it usually means that you don't have enough damage um, but you know this is just an interesting thing to know i guess and finally Finally, Takeda Shingen's third skill is a 3x3 three three turn invul, a 3 turn damage cut uh, by 500 damage, as well as a 30% MP gain up uh, by three turns all on a six turn cooldown as well so once again this is a pretty generically good skill three time three turn invul means that at worst it is a one turn invul and if in the team this can potentially protect him for many turns on end and three turns worth of 500 damage cut might seem like not a lot however uh it is not hit based most kinds of damage cut effects are hit based but this straight up just removes 500 damage from all attacks that he receives for three turns straight um this obviously 
uh, you know, makes more of a difference in a solo situation because the three time invul is easily sort of used up in a solo situation within three turns. And finally, the MP generation up, uh, you know, he does only have one quick and one arts card, but as I mentioned before, his arts card in particular is extremely strong, and especially during solos when you're able to use mighty chains every turn, this actually allows him to loop his MP pretty consistently. Uh, and because, you know, of his first skill, this skill potentially has only a five turn cooldown and suddenly when you look at both the skill two and skill three at five turn cooldowns in challenge quests they become pretty impressive skills takeda shingen has uh just pretty standard passives he has writing a which boosts his quick card by 10 percent uh helps his mighty chains but he only has one quick card match resistance d uh sometimes helps him block off annoying little debuffs but it's not really that high enough to be relevant and finally territory creation takeda which is a interesting unique passive that boosts his arts card by five percent which once again helps his mighty chain and also increases his crit chance resistance by 10% which always has been a pretty decently fine passive um, because as we mentioned before how crit chance works a lot of servants their base crit chances aren't actually that high it's like 10 to 20 or something like that so um, having 10% reduced from that uh, if the servant doesn't have any self crit boosting effects this is actually a pretty effective sort of shield uh, against stray crits that could potentially come his way and finally shingen's mp is an aoe 8 hit buster mp that seals the enemy's mps for a single turn and its overcharge effect is a triple card type resist down for a single turn that happens before the mp actually lands that scales from 20 percent all the way up to 40 percent now this is a relatively simple mp but the main effect of sealing all enemies mps for a turn being tied to an mp that is relatively loopable compared to a skill that has a set turn cooldown is a pretty exclusive effect usually uh these are reserved for servants that have mps that are not very good at dealing damage or straight up doesn't do any damage at all such as edison uh, or servants like summer musashi who can only apply this effect to saber enemies instead of all enemies the only other servant that has a decent dps mp that also is able to seal all enemies mps is riku another guda servant with koyan light you can loop his mp in challenge quests and also he has decent uh, quick and arts cards um when you get the chance to use them or when you're soloing he can actually use this mp quite often and the secondary effect of the triple card type resist down uh is only one turn but importantly it happens before the mp does damage so this does boost the mp's own damage by 20 percent whenever he uses it which is quite important because his damage isn't the craziest in terms of buster looping compared to other aoe buster riders um and of course the quick and arts down helps his quick and arts card mp gain which i mentioned is pretty decent it's once again more relevant in solo situations in my opinion but obviously if you want to take advantage of his great arts card you can just try to pick it whenever even when you're in a team so overall this is not the craziest mp ever but at least it has a very valuable effect that gives him a great niche of sort of shutting down the enemy's mps the first impression on shingen is similar to a lot of people which is that's it um, a lot of his skills seem very simple compared to modern servants uh, his mp as well however because of his good deck good face cards short cooldowns across the board with five turns on every skill especially for skill two and skill three and a good lockdown mp makes him overall a deceptively powerful unit in my opinion now for farming i don't have a lot of interesting things to say about him uh his damage looping wise lands on the lower half amongst all other aoe buster riders he doesn't have the upgrades that ivan and uh francis drake has so obviously it is going to be a little bit lower and his mp also has a notable lack of an anti-trade so he doesn't even have the opportunity to bolster his mp damage under certain circumstances uh the only notable thing about his buster looping is that he has a five turn cooldown 50 mp battery which i briefly mentioned earlier the cooldown reduction on his first skill most of the time you are going to be putting it on himself so he can use his steroids faster on the second turn in a double koi and light comp instead of using it on the third turn uh however when you do pair him specifically with tonalico 
which uh, definitely appreciates straight cooldown reductions or overcharge boost for that skill 3 activation, you can use the skill 1 with her skill 3. Shingen's Challenge Quest performance is very deceptively powerful. Uh, his solid skill 2 and skill 3 being at essentially 5 turn cooldown makes him a really great performer in both solos and team scenarios. His skill 2 being a big battery, big star bomb, and good steroid means that he has great sustain damage and he can also use his MP relatively frequently, which is very important for the lockdown effect on his MP. His skill 3 being a 3x3 three three turn invul and with a 5 turn cooldown means that in a team, this is a superb survival skill. And of course, in a solo, the 3x3 three three turn invul is not nearly as powerful of an effect. And of course, the damage cut and the MP gain up, uh, in my opinion, makes up for the uh, worst performing uh, sort of aspect of this 3x3 three three turn invul in a solo situation where the damage cut is able to protect him uh, after the invul has worn out and the MP gain up helps him gain his MP back really consistently with MPQA Mighty Chains. And of course, the MP being an AoE lockdown effect, uh, even if you're able to use his MP like every other turn on average, this essentially doubles the amount of time the enemy needs to reach their MP. And compared to a MP drain effect, which is a lot more common, um, this plays around more stuff. For example, on break effects, there's a lot of bosses that just fully charges their MP on break and they just try to wipe your entire team. And you can't really prevent that with a MP drain effect. However, with an MP seal effect, you can easily do that. And with the help of Koyan Light, uh, reducing the cooldown and helping him Buster Loop, he can essentially sort of shut down the enemy's MP for multiple times back to back. And his MP, when you're not using a traditional double meta support single DPS composition, can also serve as a sort of tricolor buff for the entire team because it is casting a triple card resist down on the enemy, meaning that your entire team can take advantage of it and not just Shingen himself. As you can see here, pretty interestingly, uh, he can loop his MP very easily on a caster boss when he is soloing. Uh, he basically prevents Babbage here from MPing uh, for like, you know, nine, eight, nine turns in a row. Uh, he just is not able to gain a single take of MP because he uses his MP every single turn, which is pretty funny. This is not very practical, but uh, you know, this is sort of a demonstration of how good his face cards are when you try to maximize that aspect of his kit. Also, in my opinion, being a Buster Servant with a Triple Buster deck these days is kind of the best deck you can have as a solo unit because the way they balance out your lack of Arts cards is once again giving you a very powerful singular Arts card. And you don't have to worry about not having access to that singular Arts card in a solo scenario because you get your entire deck every single turn if you solo. Uh, and of course, having Triple Buster cards means that you can also immediately gain access to triple buster, brave chains, and do massive amounts of damage, even without access to your MP. So having this flexibility to switch between MP, QA, mighty chains to spam your MP, to just spamming triple buster brave chains to do as much damage as possible is a great attribute for solo units. Uh, damage rushing is a huge part of solos. Sometimes it is simply better to just kill off an enemy or break their bar before they do something devastating rather than trying to survive it with convoluted survival skills. So overall, I think Shingen is very solid in both teams and solos. His looping performance is a little bit lackluster, so if you do really care about Buster looping, maybe he wouldn't be the best choice for you. But if you are someone who just like his character and you're a little bit worried about people's comments about his oversimplified sort of skill sets, I can tell you confidently, like, don't worry, he's not a year one servant, right? Like, far from it. He has very solid internals, like a great deck, great face cards, and really high uptime on relatively solid effects on his skills, and a great niche of shutting down all enemies' MPs by spamming his own MP. So, he is a great servant and very much underrated by a lot of reviewers, in my personal opinion. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Wish you the best of luck if you are a Ferrari enjoyer and want to roll for Takeda Shingen.